Welcome to the deep dive. And our mission today really is to unpack this RIO study thoroughly. We want to explore what it actually is, why major institutions like Imperial College London, Oxford, Rockefeller University, why they're putting so much behind it, and critically, how these things called broadly neutralizing antibodies, BMOBs for short, how they might lead to a kind of a, a vaccine-like remission. We'll also get into what this could genuinely mean for how often people need HIV testing and maybe a huge shift away from lifelong daily pills. The aim is simple, give you a clear understanding, empower you with the latest knowledge on what could shape the future of accurate HIV detection and control. Okay, so let's really dig into why this RAO study is so important right now. Yeah. Because for millions of people around the world, living with HIV today means that daily routine of antiretroviral treatments, RT, and let's be absolutely clear, RT has been a phenomenal success. I mean, truly monumental. It's turned HIV from what was a death sentence into a manageable chronic condition. People live long, healthy lives now. But even with that incredible success, it's, it's not without its challenges, is it? Oh, absolutely not. RT is a lifesaver, no question. But the reality of taking medication every single day, well, it brings a lot of hurdles. You've got the persistent social stigma, which is still very real. Then there's the huge psychological burden of just knowing it's lifelong. You have to adhere perfectly, otherwise you risk resistance treatment failure. Right. Missing even a few doses can be a big problem. Exactly. And then there are the potential side effects. They can range from, you know, mild annoyances to things that really impact quality of life and just the sheer effort logistically and mentally of fitting daily pills into your life year after year, decade after decade. It's this constant reminder. It's a massive commitment and often a really personal, sometimes private struggle. So this vision that RIO is exploring, uh -huh. a future where your own immune system handles the virus, Without the daily meds, yeah, it's more than just a medical step forward, isn't it? It sounds like liberation. That's precisely the word for it. This isn't just, you know, tweaking existing therapies. <laughs> the REO study feels like a genuine game changer because it's one of the very first trials to clearly show that an antibody-based therapy can keep HIV in remission after someone stops their art. Historically, stopping RT meant the virus would almost always come roaring back, and quickly, <laughs> because the drugs just suppressed it, right? They didn't kill it off or teach the immune system how to fight it. This is looking at it from a totally different angle. And the potential ripple effects. Wow. They could be enormous. <laughs> if this works on a larger scale, think about how it could reshape public health globally. Maybe reducing the need for such frequent HIV testing for people in remission opening up totally new paths towards what we call functional cures, and ultimately making HIV treatment, maybe even prevention, mm -hmm. uh, more accessible and definitely less stigmatized worldwide. Yeah, this isn't just about a new pill, it's about changing what it means to live with HIV. Okay, so let's unpack the core experiment itself. RIO stands for Remission Induction and Optimization. Bit of a mouthful, but descriptive. It's a major international clinical trial, a big collaboration between, as we mentioned, some really prestigious places, Imperial College, London, Oxford University, Rockefeller University. And they started with this incredibly bold, almost audacious question they posed to 68 participants, all already living with HIV. And that question was essentially, okay, what happens if you stop your standard lifelong RS? But instead, we give you this powerful experimental antibody treatment. So the setup, the methodology was crucial. They split the participants, half got a placebo, just a dummy infusion, while the other half received two specific long-acting, broadly neutralizing antibodies, the BNABs we mentioned. Mm. And then the researchers just watched both groups like hawks, right? Tracking viral load very closely to see who could stay suppressed after ditching their normal RDA. It was definitely a calculated risk for everyone involved, but the potential payoff was huge. And this really brings us to what makes these BNABs so special. They're fundamentally different from the typical antibodies your body makes naturally. See, our immune system, on its own, really struggles against HIV. The virus is like a master of disguise. It constantly mutates its outer surface to evade our defenses. So normal antibodies might recognize one version of HIV, but then the virus changes slightly and poof, those antibodies are useless. But BNABs, What's fascinating is they're designed, or sometimes found naturally in a few people, to recognize and neutralize many different strains of HIV at once. They're kind of like universal keys for a virus that's constantly changing its locks. That's the part I find really interesting. How do they do that? How do they recognize so many different versions? You mentioned they're engineered to lock on to conserved parts of the HIV virus. What does that mean exactly? Think of it like this. Even if someone keeps changing their clothes, right, their basic body shape stays the same. HIV might change its outer coat proteins constantly, but there are essential parts of its machinery, 
crucial for it to infect cells and replicate, that it cannot easily change without basically breaking itself. Ah, uh, okay. They're really vital bits. Exactly. The conserved regions. And BNABs are designed to target those specific unchanging spots. That's what gives them their broadly neutralizing power against different strains. Okay, that makes sense. So they grab onto the parts that can't easily mutate away. Precisely. And their action isn't just about stopping the virus directly, which is impressive enough. They seem to have this dual action. So, yes, they directly suppress the virus by binding to it and blocking it from entering cells. But they also seem to, well stimulate and educate the body's own immune memory cells. And that's where this really exciting vaccine-like effect comes in. If your immune system can learn to remember and fight off the virus more effectively on its own, even after the antibody therapy is gone, that's completely different from traditional RT. Yeah, exactly. Traditional RT works wonders, but it's more like, mm. like putting a cork in a bottle, yeah. right? As long as you take the pills, the cork stays in. The virus can't replicate easily. But the RNA itself doesn't build up your immune system's long-term memory or defenses against HIV. It doesn't really teach your body to fight. So you stop RD, the cork comes out, and bam, the virus typically rebounds, often really quickly and aggressively because the immune system hasn't learned to control it. But what Ario found with BNABs is that the virus could stay suppressed without pills for months. That hints at something deeper. A more sustained control may be driven by the body's own trained defenses. And this leads us directly to the results, the really historic, um, kind of unprecedented results from the RIO study. This is where the promise starts to feel really tangible. So it's 20 week mark. That's nearly five months after stopping art. A uh, really remarkable 75% of the participants who got the BNAP therapy still had an undetectable viral load. Wow. 75%. That's, yeah. that's huge. It is, especially when you compare it to the placebo group. In stark contrast, the vast majority of them saw their virus rebound pretty quickly, within weeks usually, and they had to restart their RT to protect their health. Understandably. So that 75% figure is a really powerful sign of the immediate effect of these BNAPs. But it gets even more interesting with the long-term picture, doesn't it? That's where this idea of functional remission really seems to emerge. Exactly. They kept watching, and they observed that about 30%, roughly a third of those who got the BNABs, stayed virally suppressed for over a year. And some went even longer, out to an incredible 72 weeks. That's well, well over a year and a half okay. without any daily medication. 72 weeks. That's amazing. So what does this really mean for someone listening for the bigger picture? Well, it strongly suggests that for, you know, maybe a significant group of individuals, their immune system can actually be trained with the help of these antibodies to control HIV effectively. Even after the antibody therapy itself is finished, the immune system seems to be doing the heavy lifting itself rather than just relying on the external drug. And beyond just keeping the virus down, there was something else potentially huge, right, about the viral reservoir. Yes, absolutely monumental. RIO showed these tantalizing signs that BNABs might actually shrink that hidden viral reservoir. This reservoir is basically a collection of dormant, sleeping, HIV-infected cells hiding out in tissues all over the body. Current RT can't touch them because they aren't actively making new virus. They're the reason the virus comes back when you stop pills. Typically. Hidden stash. Precisely. They're like this persistent, ticking time bomb for viral rebound. The fact that BNABs might actually impact this reservoir, maybe make it smaller, less likely to cause rebound, that opens up entirely new possibilities for eventually getting rid of the virus completely, not just suppressing it. And crucially for any new treatment, the therapy was generally reported as very well tolerated. Minimal side effects for most participants. Okay, so this brings up the big question that keeps floating around. Is RIO technically a vaccine? Or if not, why does everyone keep saying it's vaccine-like? Yeah, that's a really important distinction to make. Technically, no, it's not a traditional vaccine. A traditional vaccine usually primes your immune system before you're ever exposed to a virus, or maybe helps clear an active infection by generating lasting memory. But RIO acts like a vaccine in its effect, if that makes sense. The whole point of a vaccine fundamentally is to teach your immune system how to recognize and control a virus so you don't need constant medication so you don't get sick. And that is precisely what seems to be happening here with these BNABs. They appear to be teaching the immune system to win a fight it couldn't win before on its own. And it's not just RIO showing this kind of thing, right? There's That's other supporting evidence. That's right. It's not totally out of the blue. Studies like the Freish Esch study in South Africa showed something similar. In Freish, women who started ART very, very early after infection and also got some immune based therapy were later able to control HIV for long periods without pills. So, this reinforces this critical idea of functional remission. 
It's not a sterilizing cure. The virus isn't totally eliminated from the body, but it's a state where the virus is suppressed, not actively replicating, and the person stays healthy without needing daily medication. Functional remission. Yeah. So not gone, but yeah. under control yeah. by your own body's defenses. Exactly. It's a really remarkable potential step forward. This could genuinely be our first proper look at how immune-based remission could work for HIV, moving us beyond needing those daily pills forever towards a more integrated approach where the immune system is actually doing the work. Okay, let's talk about the ripple effects then. What could this mean for something practical, like HIV testing frequency, and how that impacts people's lives? Because right now, for millions on our eight, regular testing, often pretty frequent testing, is just a fundamental part of staying healthy. Those viral load tests are crucial, right? To make sure the meds are working, the virus is suppressed, catch any resistance early. It's necessary, but it can be a real burden. That's a great point. Now, project that into a future where RIO-style therapy works widely and leads to sustained remission. That testing frequency could potentially drop dramatically. Imagine going from, say, monthly or even more frequent clinic visits for blood draws down to maybe quarterly checks or possibly even just annually. Wow, right? annually. That would be huge. It's not just a minor convenience. For individuals, think about the burden it lifts. Fewer clinic visits means less time off work, less travel, less disruption. And emotionally, fewer constant reminders of their condition. It could significantly increase privacy and maybe, just maybe, reduce some of that social stigma tied to frequent clinic visits specifically for HIV care, all of which could really boost mental health and overall well-being. And thinking beyond the individual, what about the healthcare systems? especially globally. Well, reduced testing frequency frees up significant resources, doesn't it? Lab capacity, staff time, equipment. Those resources could be reallocated to other critical public health needs, maybe outreach, prevention, or other areas of care. It could streamline care, make it more efficient, potentially more accessible, especially in places where resources are already stretched thin. But, and this feels really important to stress, this doesn't mean testing goes away, right? Absolutely crucial point, no. Testing will always remain essential. Knowing your HIV status, monitoring your health, that remains paramount for everyone. Accurate, early HIV detection using things like modern HIV RNA tests that stays incredibly important for both individual health outcomes and for public health control efforts. The goal here isn't to eliminate testing. It's potentially to transform its nature and frequency for those lucky enough to achieve sustained treatment-free remission. Okay, so what's next? Where does the REO study go from here? Is it finished? Oh, far from finished. This story is definitely ongoing. The researchers are planning to keep tracking the participants right through 2027. That long-term follow-up is absolutely critical. They need to see how durable this suppression is. Does it really last without needing periodical antibody booster shots? It's all about understanding the longevity of this immune re-education, you know. Does the lesson stick? And beyond just watching the current participants, what other research is spinning out of this? Are they looking at, like, different antibodies or new approaches? Definitely. The future directions are really exciting. Researchers are already exploring new combinations of BNABs, maybe even uh, tailoring the antibody cocktail specifically to each person's unique HIV strain. Truly personalized therapy. Imagine that. Wow, personalized antibodies. Yeah. And there are also trials looking at immune stimulating agents, things that might work alongside the BNABs to try and wake up and maybe even eliminate those hidden viral reservoirs entirely. That's pushing towards an actual cure, not just remission. Okay, but we should probably add a note of caution here, right? Keep our feet on the ground. Yes, it's crucial to maintain scientific perspective. The RIO study, as groundbreaking as it is, involved a relatively small group, 68 participants. And the full detailed results, they haven't yet gone through the complete formal peer review process and publication in a major journal. That's still pending. We absolutely need larger, more diverse trials. We need to see if these results hold up in different populations, different stages of infection, ensure long-term safety across the board. Right, before anything like this could become a standard treatment option. Exactly. There's still a lot of work ahead to understand how generalizable this is. But even with those necessary caveats, what we're seeing, it feels like truly hopeful, profound progress. It's grounded in solid science, and it's really pushing the boundaries of what we thought was possible in HIV treatment. Okay, so let's try and wrap this up. What are the key takeaways for you listening right now? I think the RIO study really does represent a potential turning point a major shift in how we might approach and treat HIV in the future. 
This idea that antibody therapy could maybe one day replace daily pills for many people mm. or even lead towards a functional cure where your own body controls the virus. That's incredibly powerful stuff. It's a really profound sign that the immune system, maybe with the right help from these engineered antibodies, can actually be trained to control HIV. And that's something that for a long time was considered pretty much medically impossible. And this breakthrough, it really raises an important question for you, for all of us to think about. What could this kind of monumental shift truly mean for the global fight against HIV? Consider the implications. Moving from this paradigm of lifelong daily medication to harnessing the body's own trained defenses. How might this knowledge shape your understanding of medical breakthroughs in general? And the sheer power of human ingenuity when facing down these huge biological challenges. Definitely continue to stay informed because the landscape of HIV treatment and testing options too, it's evolving at a really astonishing and frankly inspiring pace right now. Music